there friends and thanks for joining me today. And today I'm actually really excited for the video because we're going to be talking about the glazing material for the greenhouse. And this is probably one of the biggest points to uh, cover because this can seriously make or break the performance of the entire greenhouse. It's the main product that we have that's going to determine how much heat the greenhouse has. Does it diffuse the light? Is it straight through? These sorts of things. There are actually a lot of things to consider when it comes to picking this product. So here are a few of them. So the first one would be light transmittance. You know, how much light does it let through? Insulating value. This is also known as the R value. Uh, the cost, obviously, very important to most of us. Durability. How long does it last and what kind of weather conditions can it stand up to? Very important. Um, UV protection. How well does it stand up in, you know, just the sun? The color, because there are different types out there. So there is opaque versions. Uh, there's transparent or translucent. As far as colors go, there's uh, many to choose from. There's brown, you know, gray, I think is an opal, which is kind of a white color, these types of things. How many layers does this material have? This also affects, you know, how well it insulates, whether or not it diffuses light, these sorts of things. So there are lots of things to consider when it comes to choosing this material. And so let's go ahead and talk about the different materials available out there. And then we'll go through the you know pros and cons of each and i will share with you my favorite first one is polyethylene that is going to be just that like single sheet really thin plastic okay so here's an example of some polyethylene plastic as you can see it's just a single like layer sheet of plastic you would usually just stretch this and put it over your greenhouse um, but the problem is so this sort of material has an R value of about 0.8, which is not very high. It does not hold in the heat very well. Uh, it's very cheap to buy, very inexpensive to purchase. Um, but the, uh, the main problem that I have with it is that it doesn't last very long. Uh, typically you put this on and because it does not stand up to the weather, like hardly at all, uh, you know, it just breaks really easily. So in the area where we live, if we were to make a greenhouse with this material, even if we stretch it nice and tight, we get a lot of snow and so it just doesn't hold up very well in the snow. It also does not hold up very well in the wind. The wind can kind of blow it around and you know even make the structures fall apart. And so while this is very inexpensive to buy, just because it doesn't last very long and it just has such a poor thermal performance, this is not my favorite choice. Something like this would work really well on say like a row cover or you know a small hoop house or you know um, just something similar to that, uh, but not for the whole year and certainly not you know in a, a year round greenhouse. The second choice would be actually to use two of these, so two layers of these. And then what people will frequently do is put a blower between them to kind of keep the two inflated. So it's kind of like a double pane window where it adds sort of an insulating bubble between the two layers. And so this um, drastically increases its R value, but also the blower can help make the whole thing more rigid. So it can handle more snow, it can handle more wind. You know, greenhouses that are made out of this can typically use just different, you know, products like wiggle wire and things like that that hold it in place so that it can handle more more weather extremes. My issue is that it still doesn't last very long and it still doesn't insulate very well. The next choice would be acrylic. Acrylic panels are just kind of like plexiglass except they're plexi plastic. They're just like these straight panels that are plastic and they don't diffuse the light at all. They're usually clear, although there are different choices. Um, but honestly, they're very expensive. I went to Home Depot just to like kind of price those out to see how much they would be. And in the Home Depot store, they are very expensive. So um, I felt like that wasn't a very good choice and they really don't have a very good R value. They don't insulate very well. And so for this reason, I feel like they would get such a poor performance and yet cost a lot. And so this wasn't the choice that we made either. But I'm sure that it has, you know, its place, you know, in certain greenhouse applications as well. The next one would be corrugated polycarbonate. So what this looks like is it's kind of a like, wave. It kind of looks like a wave um, and it's very easy to find. So my local Home Depot store has this and it's actually very affordable. So a two by eight sheet was just $15 at the Home Depot. So again, it was available, you know, locally, which is great. You know, it was easy to find. It's very inexpensive. It's very durable. So it can handle hail, it can handle snow, it can handle wind. A lot of the things that that, you know, um, polyethylene plastic couldn't handle and it can bend to go over angles. So you can do, you know, like curves and, you know, arches and things like that, which is very nice. The accessories are also very easy to find and they're very cheap. 
Um, so really, I am a fan. The whole reason I chose not to go with this material for our greenhouse, though, is that it just doesn't have a very good insulating value. So its insulated value is 0.9, still it's below 1, an R value of 1. And so um, I think it would make a great three season greenhouse or it would make a great four season greenhouse for people who live down in the warmer climates, places where it doesn't get as cold. So yeah, definitely a good choice for people who live down there. So, okay, so the next one I wanna talk about is glass. So just regular glass windows make really good choices for greenhouses. Uh, they have a really long lifespan, so they can last a really, really long time. They can open for ventilation, which is great. This was one of the things that we really wanted in our greenhouse and most greenhouses need, uh, unless you live in a cloudy or overcast area. If it gets a lot of direct sunlight, especially in summertime, you're gonna need a lot of ventilation. And so windows opening is very good. You know, the fact that they can open, that's very useful. They're clear, which makes it to where you get a nice view. Um, uh, my issue with them though is that they are more expensive than polycarbonate and yet have a poor thermal performance. So that was probably one of the things that we mainly chose wanting to go with polycarbonate on our walls for. One thing you want to think about though, because glass is clear, it's completely transparent, uh, you can actually have your plants get burnt by the sun in a, a greenhouse that has glass. So because the sunlight is coming all in from one direction, there's no light diffusing whatsoever, um, the plants can get kind of like a sunburn, like their leaves you know, can get kind of dry or shriveled in certain areas because it's just too strong in that one specific area. The other thing I didn't really like about glass is that it blocks the UV rays that we need in order to um, get vitamin D from the sun. For this reason, we chose not to do too much glass on our greenhouse because we did be want to have like a sitting area in our greenhouse. We want to be able to hang out here and we want to be able to absorb the vitamin D. So um, they have a poor light transmittance too. So another reason that we wanted our greenhouse is because we want it to heat our house. And so we wanted it to get as hot as possible in here in the winter time so, so that we can ventilate all of that heat into our house. And so having uh, the highest light transmittance possible is really important to us so that we can get as much heat in here as we can. The next choice would be multi-wall polycarbonate. Multi-wall polycarbonate looks different depending on the type of material that you are using. But um, so there are different types. There is this one. Actually, let me show you this one first. This one is a clear panel. It's about a three millimeter. It's very, very thin. Uh, but it has two layers, so it's a double wall polycarbonate. Um, you can see there, you can see through it. Uh, let me hold it from the side here. So this is the end where you can kind of see how thick this is. As you can see, it is very, very, very thin. Um, so it has a better thermal performance than say a single layer, but it still gets very cold uh, in a four season greenhouse with something that thin. Uh, but a double wall polycarbonate is a very good choice. Another good choice would be a triple wall polycarbonate. This one still has the, you know, paper that came with it when, or the plastic that came with it when it was shipped to us. But this is actually the material that we used for our greenhouse. It's a triple wall polycarbonate and it's 16 millimeters. As you can see, it is much thicker. And if you can kind of see the profile there, it actually has like a, a section in the center there. So it makes for two different chambers here. And this helps to insulate out the cold and keep the warm in as well. So this is what makes it like super insulating and this is what I think makes all the difference when it comes to building a greenhouse that you want to have as a four season without having to heat it. So one of the critical things there to think about the multi-wall polycarbonate. So there are a lot of good things about polycarbonate. Um, Multi-wall polycarbonate, because it does have this look to it where you can't fully see through it entirely, it's not totally clear, it's translucent rather than transparent, it diffuses the light, which makes it to where the plants don't get that sun scald or that sunburn. Um, so that's good. It doesn't block the UV rays. It has a very good thermal trans or light transmittance, and it has a much higher R value. So its thermal performance is really can't be beat. It really can't be. So because this is, in my opinion, the best choice, <laughs> I was willing to wait and save as long as we needed to to be able to afford this material for our greenhouse. And this was very, very 
very high quality material that I got for a fairly inexpensive price and I'm really happy with the way that it has turned out. It has a very long lifespan. A lot of people use these in like hurricane areas even where they will put them over their windows so that when the wind is blowing and the tree branches and all this are breaking their windows won't break because it can handle a lot a lot of weather before anything will happen to it and I can contest to that before we had snow stacked up just so thick on our last greenhouse and nothing ever happened to it it was never an issue we had hail and it didn't damage it, not even a little bit. So yeah, it's very, very good at handling whatever kind of weather that we had. Um, even high winds, it was very good at all of that. And so because polycarbonate has such a good balance of light transmittance, uh, insulating ability, and still very affordable, more affordable than glass, and yet better light transmittance and you know durability, this was obviously our choice. So we do need to keep in mind that they do have different R values. So a typical double wall polycarbonate, this thinner one like I showed you, is about a, a one. Uh, if it were like a six millimeter, unlike this three millimeter here, it would be like a 1.5. Um, Home Depot has a two by eight sheet that's only $37 for a double wall polycarbonate that's thicker than the one that I have here. So it's actually fairly affordable. This triple wall polycarbonate, again, was my choice. It has an insulative value of, oh, I think it's a 2.5. There is also a five wall polycarbonate. So this is usually very thick. I think it's like a 25 millimeter is what that one comes in. Uh, but it's very expensive and it doesn't come with the profiles, which I'll show you in a second. So when you are working with polycarbonate, there are several things that you need to consider. Let's just get rid of this plastic. Then we'll be able to see the panel a little bit better here. This is what it actually looks like without the plastic on it. So when you're working with polycarbonate, there are a few things that you want to consider. They have to have what are called profiles to kind of go with it. So on this end where there's all of these open chambers, you might be thinking, well, how do you cap that off to keep water from getting in there, bugs from getting in there, that sort of thing. And that is very important. So what they have is this um, channel, it's called a U channel, I, I believe it is called. And this basically just goes on the end, it snaps rather snugly there. So you snap it on the end there and now it is capped off so that you don't have to worry about stuff getting in there. I used screws to hold it on, but I'm not really sure what the official correct way to do it is, uh, but that is one of the things that we did. So when you're joining the panel side to side, which another thing you want to keep in mind when you're in installing this is that you want the channels to go up and down like this. Never ever install polycarbonate sideways like this. You use the U channels at the top and the bottom on either the roof or the walls, wherever it is that you're installing them. And then they also make what's called an H channel. It looks like this. Uh, it has, it's kind of like an H if you can kind of tell. It has an open end on one side where the polycarbonate slips in and then uh, the polycarbonate on the other side where it slips in. So as you're installing this, like let's pretend this was a wall. Um, we would put this here in there like this and then we would put a second one in this side here. Not where it's all dirty like that, but there we go. So we would put it in to the channel, we would put another one right here, and then you can join the panels from one side to the next. And this is what I did all the way across my entire roof and on the walls. So these types of um, extras are definitely needed. They definitely help make it easier to install, but also just increase the performance again. And then another thing you wanna consider when you're using polycarbonate is that you're using the right screws. So screws that look like this, they come, I bought these from my local Home Depot store. They have a nice flat washer underneath where the head goes, and it's actually got a little bit of rubber right here. So that when you're installing them, you don't want to install them too tightly. You want to just install it to where it sits snugly right at the end of the polycarbonate and no more. Well, polycarbonate is prone to thermal expansion, so we don't want to put it too tight we don't want to make it to where it's constantly expanding and contracting and then uh, it can't do that with screws that are too tight. Another thing that I feel like polycarbonate benefits from is some weather stripping. It, I chose some weather stripping that I got on Amazon. It's about an inch and a half wide, which is exactly how big it needed to be on our framing lumber because so it covered that area perfectly. It made for a nice surface for the polycarbonate to sit on. It gives it you know, the ability that it can expand and contract with its thermal expansion. Like I said, that polycarbonate is prone to. OK, 
Okay, and then really quickly, the different types of polycarbonate there is available out there. Should that be the choice that you decided to make with your greenhouse? There are lots of different choices to make. Like, uh, as I was looking into it, there was a lot of choices, a lot of different brands. Polygol, Lexin, Pelram, Sunlight, Thermoglass, Made in America. There were, again, a lot of different choices. And so just to compare really quickly, because I really do feel like a lot of them were very much the same quality, the choices were mainly um, price. <laughs> price obviously weighed heavily in my situation, but also just the little differences in the quality. So let's just compare Lexin to a Made in America panel. So the Lexin came in at an R value of 2.38, whereas the Made in America was a 2.5. So the Made in America was a little bit higher. The Lexin came in at a price point of about $3.98 a square foot, so nearly $4 a square foot. The Made in America was $2.98 a square foot, so almost $3, basically a dollar cheaper, and it had a higher R value. Uh, the light transmittance was the same, or maybe the Made in America was ever so slightly better. And so if anything, out of all of the ones that I listed that I was looking into and through all these different companies, I did a lot of research because I wanted to make sure we were going to find a high quality material at aff an affordable price. Um, I really found that the Made in America panels were the best choice. And I feel like they really made it to where we would end up with our four season greenhouse that we wouldn't have to heat much, if at all, uh, later on. So when we pay a little bit more for materials up front, but then we save over the whole entire lifetime of the greenhouse, it definitely makes it worth it because we don't have to keep having that heat bill uh, continually later on. So it was worth it to us to have to pay a little bit more in the materials up front to save on all of that heat that we wouldn't have to be putting in later. So I chose to buy my materials from a website, Advanced Greenhouse so or advanced greenhouses i don't know i'll link it below but uh, yeah that's who i chose to buy my materials from she was very nice she was very helpful she even helped me design the framing for the roof a little bit because i wasn't sure how far apart the purlings were going to have to be and so, yes yeah, so if you want a high quality material and she sells way more than just the material you know that we chose she sells um the polyethylene plastic she sells thinner polycarbonate thicker polycarbonate you know, just all these different materials that work for greenhouses and that would work for each person's specific situation. She has all kinds of materials. That's who I bought, again, my materials from, and I would highly recommend if you wanted to um, build a greenhouse of your own to price materials through her because I couldn't find my polycarbonate, the polycarbonate that we used for anywhere near the same price. So definitely she was the cheapest. So that's why I highly recommended it. So anyway, those are the list of the different materials that we can use, the different glazing materials that we can put on our greenhouse. Again, I feel like this is a very important decision. It can make or break the whole entire greenhouse. And so make sure you choose the right material. All of them are good choices and just in the right application. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. I hope you're enjoying this greenhouse series. We only have a couple more in the series before it's going to be over. So stay tuned for next week's for next video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.